Now I wanted to talk about a topic today that uh, I'm really familiar with and I really enjoy and that's speed scouting public land for bucks. Um, if you're like me, you know, a lot of people out there say, hey, if you put the work in, this is a 365.7 for whitetails and hey, I live 365.7 for whitetails because it's my career. You know, I had answer an hour of YouTube comments every single day. I have three properties that I manage uh, for myself and uh, visit 90 clients, you know, this year alone around the country. So for me, it really is 365.7, but it's my career and my profession. That's what I do for a living. A lot of people don't have a lot of time for this. Um, you know, if I was gonna go down and hunt Ohio again, or I might hunt Western Illinois this year, um, if I'm gonna go out to a public land area, I wanna get in and out in a day or two at the most to identify some, some hot spots to hunt. Then I wanna go back there when I hunt. And it might be I go in kind of a semi-serious hunt, see how the cameras are doing, and then I come back for a real serious rut hunt. It's all based back to that speed scouting. I, don't, I do not have days and days and days to, to wander and scout unless I'm getting paid to do so on my client properties. Public land, I, I expect to get in there and get out. I can't remember, I think it was 2016, 2017, somewhere around there, hunted uh, Ohio public land. We went into a new area and my hunting buddy Rich and I, we went and identified several areas that we thought were great. And we did this ahead of time, kind of what I'm doing right now. I have this on, on Onyx map and it's pretty easy to do. You know, in, in the case of this, what I'm, I'm looking at, what I like about big hill country, public land, no matter what state it is, is that hills define where deer move. A lot of, you can throw out a lot of steep faces, steep gorges, and you're looking for flats and benches and points that deer move through and you can really narrow down and where we're looking at right here, I would estimate that this, this map right here might cover a thousand acres, 1500 acres, 1200, I'm not really sure. I like it because it's got several clear cuts in it. So this is a random area in Ohio and we've identified an area with clear cuts. Now you can see the clear cuts because of the light areas on the map right here. And the light areas define clear cuts. Um, you can tell if it's a little bit darker area that the clear cut's older. If it's really light, it's brand new or newish. And uh, those are the ones that I like to focus on. I like to focus on those clear cuts that are up to three years old. The worst thing you could do in an area like this, this is thousands and thousands of, of acres of public land, tens of thousands. For you to go in and try to find a buck bed and go back and hunt it is just a useless task. And, and there's a lot of people do that. That tactic does fit where you have island, public land hunting, really small public land tracks. And it, and it works in, in some of the uh, fantasy land states like Iowa or Kansas, where you can afford to bump a mature buck out of a small area, a small open area, and just have another one come in and shoot them the next day or the next week. That's a luxury most of us don't have. In fact, I'm hunting on 30 acres of cover on one property, eight acres on another, and 25 acres on another. So I can't afford, I have to really maximize my time there, be very efficient, get in and out without spooking deer. And when that comes to public land, I want to do the same because let's face it, public land, most public land tracks, there's not a bunch of mature bucks running around and you're really trying to maximize your stand locations that you find. So when I'm looking at a public land area like this, I have hills and I have clear cuts on my side and I have remoteness. So if I'm getting in at least 45 minutes to an hour away from the truck, then I can reasonably count on not very many people back there. And so if I can scatter a stand assemblage over a thousand acre area or 1200 acre area that looks hot then that's the idea so it all starts with going down july august and identifying some areas you can see in here i'll just mark this up a little bit um, you can see clear cuts clear cuts on here outlined in green here's an older clear cut if you can tell that it's a little bit more muted clear cut clear cut off to the side right here so we have some great clear cuts in this location that we can count on to try to narrow down exactly where we're seeing deer. Then within those areas, we have some great uh, funnel and op opportunities for funnel. And I know we're not zoomed in on this so we can see the topography detail, but for me, if I were looking at this area, I'm not gonna look in those clear cuts because those clear cuts are going to be thick, nasty, I want to stay out of them, I want the deer to relate to them, and let's face it, when they get six, seven years old, it's impenetrable, even, even by deer, to slip in there, so that's why you're really focusing on those young clear cuts. But in this case, I'm looking at the top of this bench, bench system that might connect these two trail cut, 
the, these two clear cuts. I might look for an area like this where you have a point and within that point there might be a really nice bench crossing here. It could be ditch crossings, bench crossings, whatever it might be. Um, so I'm looking, and you can see it's very, very steep on this side, very steep on the other side. So I'm looking at where deer might possibly move around this point right here. You have a steep, deep draw right here that goes all the way back and forth. And so these bump outs and points, there might be a really good bench system here. You might find that deer are crossing right here relating to that clear cut. Really good opportunities, even here we have a clear cut and another clear cut, then I'm looking at this movement in between. When you take this consideration right here, you have a hollow going up here, so there's a point here, another point there, there's a connection in here between. So just in a, in a couple minutes here, we've taken a random spot, public land with hills and clear cuts, and identified seven, eight, nine locations that you and a buddy could get in and out in a half day, maybe a full day. And when I look in those areas, I'm looking for old buck sign, current buck sign, good movements, good trails. I'm going in there and saying, there should be deer movement here. And look, there's a trail, there's old rubs. It's telling me that by lay of the land, there's deer there. And now I'm using the clear cuts to let me know that they're giant. It's almost like a big, hunting a big cornfield where I know those deer are going to be there and I'm going to be able to hunt those deer and hunt that movement. And we're gonna take that and we're gonna take an area like this and we're gonna put, let's say we found this area was hot, this area was hot, maybe this, this crossing at a point, this bench system right here, they're all hot. Well, these areas might be a half mile apart, but those yellow areas are where I'm sticking a camera. So I'm gonna stick a camera in those locations I'm going to watch that and hey if you're not using a camera then you can just go back out season starts october 1st then i might go take an early october hunt check the trail cameras check the sign if i'm hunting early in the season i'm going to focus on some of the really nice uh, stands of oak maybe a white oak stand that have to be october 1st because they're going to be gone uh, chestnut oats oak stand they're usually dropping in october sometime a lot of scrapes pop up but by and large i'm hunting these areas in rut that's what we did in 2016 we went back and uh, identified those spots. We had four cameras out. We had mature bucks on all those cameras. We were focusing on young clear cuts and ended up going back during a major cold front and, uh, and shot a buck, I believe it was a Monday before Thanksgiving. I went down there literally to hunt two mornings and an evening, take advantage of that 30, 35 degree drop, drop in winds, cold temperatures and hunt and ended up shooting that buck, one of the target ones at 8.30 in the morning um, on that Monday. So very successful approach it does take going down there i do like going down there once uh wherever i'm going just once during the summertime to identify these areas and say yeah these these areas work and then we're living and dying by that location and we're going back and we're just uh making sure that it looks good early october and then we're really getting serious during the during the rut i'm focusing on the middle of the rut because i'm looking for long-range cruisers and i look at like if there's a buck somewhere in this area this huge area, then I'm going to end up getting an um, opportunity at them, at least by camera, if I know he's there and I hunt those funnels and I hunt those movements that we found during, the, during July on a speed scouting trip, then a great opportunity. And in that case, I'm, again, I'm using those good hills down there, it's two, three hundred foot change in elevation. I'm using clear cuts and I'm using young clear cuts, and then I'm looking for those funnels and pinch points in between by topography, those long flat benches, those flat benches that go around the end of the point, maybe a few saddles throw in, thrown in, and then yes, I'm getting well away from the car. The very next year I shot that buck, there were hunters all over that place, and it seems they, a lot of the hunters are behind. Be one of those proactive ones where you're searching out those new clear cuts in an area like that, and, uh, and then going back. This is just one area. Second area I want to talk about, so that's one area, that's one area I'm real familiar with. You know, I tend not to talk about ag as much or open marshland hunting around ag because a lot of times those public land areas are small. There's a lot of it. And there's very few areas where you can actually find deer because it's wet. You have to get to a remote location. Um, same with 
open ag areas that might be public. You have a little five acre, 10, 10 acre chunk here that's surrounded by ag. A little bit easier to hunt those areas because you know those bucks are gonna be in those spots and it's more about careful approach. I'm talking about big wilderness areas and big woods, big hill country, uh, um, public land settings. And this is a big wilderness area that, that I am familiar with and I, I took just from the UP of Michigan. Um, big open area, and I'll give you a little background. This is, these are hardwoods over here, and then this is a swamp system with different marshes and points. Very difficult to get into, 45 minutes to get back into this location at least. And I'm going back around here and I'm identifying some really interesting points. And I, and I look at like, you know, hardwoods are right here. Looks really wet right here. So I'm looking at, and this is over a big area, this is a few thousand acres, where deer will head to that point that way. You can see a connection of islands. So if I back up, I'm using these island connections and I'm gonna see what's out there. I'm checking out this area, this area, maybe these two. You're starting to check out islands. And again, you're looking for old signs. You have the tip right here. You have this island up here. You can obviously see where there's more hard ground up there. So a lot of potential deer movement. I'm looking at this elbow on this island right here. And so I'm looking at areas where deer can move around, um, where they have to move through in a big wilderness setting like that. I love hunting marshes and in, in big wood settings because again, just like the hills, it narrows down where deer are gonna travel and it sets it up for you. And so I'd take a card like this, you could go in there and speed scout and just, it used to be on the old laminate days in the 90s, I'm using a, a laminate of a, a forestry map I'm cutting that out, I'm laminating it, and I'm circling these hot spots, and I'm going out and checking them out with a compass, and that's what I did in the 90s. Um, that's how I got to know this. Now now we can cheat with Onyx Maps and the uh, Google Mapping, and uh, I use U.S. topography in Hill, Hill Country too. Google, uh, Onyx is great because it has a hybrid where you can actually overlay the topo lines on it. But here, I'm using this pattern of area where deer can travel through in little islands between big hardwood settings where you know they're feeding and then marshes where you know they're going out to, into every day and then coming back. I actually shot a really nice buck in 98 in this same pattern right here. But I'm looking at these areas and then again, I'm identifying those areas. I'm going back, I'm sticking cameras, you know, maybe one in each one of these spots so I can check out that line of movement and I'm sticking that in there and, uh, and, you know, again, you're putting those cameras on on a speed scouting trip middle of summer. You go back early October to hunt it, see what kind of movement's through there, to see some kind of movement. You're looking for old sign. A history of old sign in anywhere you hunt is better than current sign because it tells you a pattern of bucks over a decade or more instead of a pattern of bucks just for one year. If there's any clear cuts thrown in here, be mindful of how those work. You approach from a really hard side to get in there. Uh, maybe throw in a couple beaver dams that you have to cross where you might get wet if you fall in. I did fall in, in an area like this. Um, speed scouting. You're looking for very defined, highly defined points in a portion of land that is broken. Could be hill country, could be clear cuts, could be marshland, wilderness, big woods with clear cuts. Doesn't matter if it's flat or if it's really hilly. I like the hill country. Um, but again, you're finding out a lot of intel with how deer will move either by high, high and dry islands, by hill country, lay of the land. You're finding a side that you can get in there without spooking deer, maybe on the east side, north side, doesn't really matter where it is, you're gonna touch into those areas, get in and out without spooking the deer, come in the difficult areas, stay away from people. And in one little Saturday scouting trip, the end of July, early August, you can build an incredible hunt for this fall. I can say in this area in the marshland, I went in there one time. The next time I went in there, shot a really nice eight point buck on public land in 98. 2016, we hunted that a handful of times. Rich had two opportunities at mature bucks. I had one, made it count, and just a handful of sits. We got a lot of really cool mature buck, buck footage in those locations over just a handful of stands and stand opportunities. And you can do it, um, pay attention to the stuff that we put out on this channel. I have a public land playlist. I have several, uh, quite a few uh, public land playlist um, uh, videos in there. And I think I've, I've shot a lot of bucks on public land going back uh, into the 80s. And this is how 
I can get it done quickly. And if you're like me, like I said, you don't have a lot of time. So this is a great way to speed scout public land this fall and find a, uh, an ounce of success, maybe a great deal of success based on a track record for several decades.